I, 24M, have a good relationship with my mother, 40F. Even though, as you can tell from our age, she had me when she was very young and obviously lacked the maturity to raise me. So I lived my grandparents, who were then below poverty line, for most of my childhood while my mother moved away to get her college education. I don't blame her for her choices. I know she worked hard to improve herself and to get to a place where she would have the means to raise me right, but it wasn't until I was 11 or 12 that she was stable enough to get me to live with her. Bio dad was never in the picture. Anyway, now my mother is financially comfortable and happily married. She gave birth to her second son a couple of weeks ago. I don't live with her anymore. We're not in the same city. It's a two-hour drive. So it wasn't until yesterday that I managed to visit her and see my half-brother for the first time. I noticed she was surrounded by a lot of fancy accessories. So I was like, what are those? And she was like, that's the baby's Lexus stroller and Louis Vuitton diaper bag, of course. So I said something like, you really went overboard, huh? And then she said something that really hurt me. She said she now had the chance to experience motherhood for the first time and that she was feeling like a first-time mom because when she had me, she was so young and unprepared and financially vulnerable. So I told her she was not a first-time mom and I couldn't understand why she'd say something like that to me. She tried to argue that she didn't mean it like that, but I was still upset. I just didn't push it because my stepfather arrived. She texted me after I left, but I didn't reply yet. I also didn't pick up when she tried to call me. I sat in my car in the parking lot in front of my mother's house, lost in my thoughts. The evening darkness slowly enveloped the city, and only the dim street lights pierced the thick gloom. My mother's words, casually thrown out, spun around in my head like a song I couldn't stop playing. I feel like a mother for the first time. At first, I thought I must have misunderstood, but no, she really said that. And it hurt. Very much. My mind, like a well-tuned time machine, instantly transported me back many years. I remembered how I was five or six, living with my grandparents in a small, old apartment on the outskirts of the city. My grandmother cooked modest meals for me, and my grandfather told stories about his youth in the village, about hard work, and the importance of always being honest. Life was simple but not easy. We lived on the edge of poverty. My mother had gone to another city to get an education, promising to return with success and a better life. I never doubted her intentions. I believed everything she did was for me. Yet those years without her left a mark. It was like living in the shadow of a promise. I often asked myself if it would have been better if she had stayed. But then I remembered her words. I'm doing this for us. And I tried to accept it. Now she was finally stable. A well-paying job. A happy marriage, a big house, and this luxurious stroller for her baby. She was living a different life, one entirely different from the one we had before. And I was genuinely happy for her, really. But her words about experiencing motherhood for the first time hurt deeply. Did those years not count? Was I just a phase in her life she was trying to forget? I stared at the phone that was blinking with a message from her, but I couldn't bring myself to reply. Inside me, something was boiling. Anger, disappointment, pain. This wasn't her fault, but it wasn't my fault either. Time might heal everything, but I wasn't sure if it would be enough this time. A few days passed, but the thoughts of the past wouldn't leave me. They resurfaced every time I saw her message, which remained unread. I found myself transported back to the years I spent with my grandparents. Our life was modest, almost impoverished. We lived in an old house where something always broke down. But despite everything, it was always warm with the love of my grandparents. My grandmother often prepared simple but delicious meals for lunch, potato soup, or stewed vegetables. We didn't have much, but it was always made with love. She would tell me stories of her childhood, about how they had to survive during the war, and how important it was to be grateful for what you have. Her words held weight for me, even as a child. Sometimes I felt she was my main guide through life. Then there was my grandfather. He was stern but fair. He never spoke much about his past, but his scarred hands told a story without words. He taught me that hard work shapes a person, and that even if you are poor, you can always be dignified and honest. Those years with them were hard, but they instilled in me a sense of resilience. Yet even then, I was waiting for my mother. 
I waited for the day she would finally take me to her, so we could be a family. That day came when I was eleven. I remember her arriving by train, smiling, though a bit tired. She hugged me tightly, and I felt that my life could finally begin to move forward. But now, when she said she was feeling motherhood for the first time, it hurt me. What did that mean for me? Did those years when she tried to bring me back into her life not matter? I picked up the phone and typed her a message, though I hesitated to send it. Mom, I understand that your life is completely different now. But what happened in the past also matters to me. I wasn't just a part of your struggles. I was your son then, and I remain your son now. I saved the message without sending it. I needed more time to understand what exactly I wanted to say, but I knew I couldn't avoid this any longer. My mother kept texting. Her last message was short but insistent. We need to talk. Please. I knew this conversation was inevitable. So, a few days later, I decided it was time. I drove to her. The road was long. Two hours passed in silence. I kept thinking about how difficult this conversation would be. We had so much unspoken between us. Her life now seemed perfect. A big house, expensive items for the newborn, a happy marriage. But in this life, there was no room for memories of the years when we struggled together. When I arrived, she was waiting for me in the kitchen. A cup of warm tea sat on the table, which she must have made for me. Her eyes looked a bit tired, but she seemed calm. I'm glad you came, she said as I sat across from her. I've been thinking about what I said, and I realized that I might have expressed myself poorly. I remained silent, waiting for her to say more. When I said that I feel like a first-time mother, I didn't mean to devalue our years together. It's just that everything is different now. I have stability, the financial means to give my second son what I couldn't give you. But that doesn't mean I don't cherish you. I thought about how she might not understand that this wasn't about material things. I didn't envy her new life or the luxury items. It was about us, about our history, which couldn't simply be erased. Yes, she had worked hard to create a life for herself, but her words suggested that I was merely a mistake. And that hurt. Maybe you see it as a failure, I said, trying to stay calm, but I never blamed you. I understood why you made that choice. You were trying to give me a better future. But when you say that you're experiencing motherhood for the first time, it sounds like I was just a mistake. And that hurts. Her eyes filled with tears. It was a difficult acknowledgement for both of us. We had both experienced different kinds of pain. Hers from guilt. Mine from feeling abandoned. And now, in this moment, those two realities had met. Silence filled the room. I could see her struggling with her emotions. Her eyes were filled with pain and guilt. This was difficult for her, just as it was for me. Her gentle hands, which once supported me, now trembled with tension. I never considered you a mistake, she finally said, her voice barely audible. I've always loved you, and it hurts to hear that you feel differently. But maybe you're right. I didn't give you everything I should have. And perhaps that's why I'm now trying to compensate for it with your brother. Her acknowledgement struck me even harder. I had never thought about it from her perspective. She had lived with the burden of guilt all these years. Had she felt she let me down because she couldn't be there for me the way she wanted? It explained her behavior now, but it didn't erase the pain from her past words. Maybe you're trying to make up for what you couldn't give me before, I said gently. But I don't want you to live in the past or try to fix it. I just want you to understand. Our past matters too. You were a mother to me back then even if everything wasn't how you envisioned it. She wiped the tears that had appeared on her cheeks. I never stopped loving you, and you've always been the most important thing to me. But you're right. I need to accept the past as it was and not try to rewrite it through the present. At that moment, I felt something change between us. There had never been malice between us. But that invisible wall we both unknowingly built through years of pain began to crumble. We realized that our feelings and our past were not something to be fixed, but something to be reconciled with. And while this reconciliation would not be easy, the first step had been A taken. few weeks passed after our conversation, and I felt something had changed. Now, when I visited my mother, everything was different. We no longer avoided difficult topics, 
no longer hid our emotions behind a facade of smiles. We talked, openly and honestly. It was hard, but I felt our relationship became more genuine. I watched how she interacted with my younger brother, with love and care that was evident. But I also saw that she had begun to treat our past with respect. She no longer tried to forget or hide those difficult years. She accepted them as part of her shared life. One day, we were sitting in her kitchen over cups of coffee, and I unexpectedly asked, Have you ever thought about how things might have turned out if you hadn't gone to study? She smiled, but it was a smile tinged with sadness. Yes, of course. I've thought about it many times, and I think we might have been happier in some ways. But I also know that without those sacrifices, I wouldn't have what I have now. I will never stop wondering if there was another way. But the choice is made. We live in the reality we've created ourselves. Her words made me think. Life rarely gives us ideal options. We make choices that seem right at the moment, but the consequences can be tough for everyone. Yet it is these choices that shape our future. I looked at my little brother, who was sleeping peacefully in his crib. He didn't know about the struggles we had endured, but he was destined to grow up in a different world. And that was good. Days turned into weeks, and I felt the air around us become lighter. The unspoken weight had been lifted. Our conversations had become more frequent and more relaxed. My mother seemed less burdened by guilt. She still loved her new son deeply but she had also started to reconcile with her past. One day, she suggested we take a walk with my brother. It was a beautiful afternoon, and I agreed, appreciating this new lightness in our relationship. We strolled through the nearby park, where the trees were adorned with golden leaves, and the crisp autumn air filled our lungs. As we walked, I began to notice how she interacted with my brother, how she patiently explained the world around them. Look, this is a tree she said softly, pointing to a tall oak, and it grows every year, just like you will, my little one. I watched her, remembering how she had once struggled to find her way. This feels good, I said, breaking the comfortable silence. It feels like we're a family again. She smiled at me, a real smile that reached her eyes. I've missed this. I've missed us. I've missed the connection I thought I lost. I think we're building a new one, I replied, feeling hopeful. As we continued our walk, I realized that our past wouldn't disappear, but it wouldn't hold us back either. We had faced our demons, and now we could move forward together. Life wouldn't always be easy, but we had each other. And sometimes that was enough to face whatever the future might hold. The Saturday morning sun barely broke through the clouds, illuminating a city still waking up. At the corner of the street, in a small cozy cafe with windows overlooking the park, sat two friends, Jessica and Amanda. Their meeting in this place had become a tradition, as they had known each other for many years, and during that time they had gone through a lot together. In college, they were inseparable, supporting each other in everything from stressful exams to heartaches. Jessica, delicate and dreamy, sat, stirring her coffee absent-mindedly. Her short red hair was tied up in a messy bun, and her large brown eyes gazed somewhere through the window. She was always full of creative ideas and a love for life. Her works were exhibited in a local gallery where she worked as a curator. Every painting she created reflected Jessica's inner world, filled with colors and hidden emotions. But today her thoughts were far from art. I keep thinking about him, she suddenly said, breaking the silence between them. Amanda, who had been buried in her laptop, something she rarely left even on weekends, looked up at her friend. Her long chestnut hair was perfectly combed, and her tailored blazer reflected her serious, disciplined nature. She worked at a prestigious law firm and was known for her ability to win even the toughest cases. Her life had always been carefully planned and orderly, but something had changed in recent weeks. You mean Eric? Amanda asked, a faint smile playing on her lips. Jessica nodded. Her eyes sparkled as she recalled the chance meeting with him at the gallery. Eric was tall, athletic, with dark hair and an intense gaze. He had unexpectedly appeared at the opening of her exhibition last week, 
immediately drawing Jessica's attention. Even though there were many influential people among the guests, their conversation had started out ordinary, but as it progressed, they discovered more and more about each other. He wasn't just a visitor. He understood her art on a deeper level. This intrigued her. You know he's a lawyer, right? Amanda noted, curiously watching her friend. Really? Jessica was surprised. She had imagined Eric working in a more creative field, perhaps something related to music or philosophy. Yes, he works for a big law firm, the same one where I recently conducted an investigation. We talked during an event. By the way, he turned out to be very well-read. We discussed politics, economics, but it seems that's not all he's interested in. Amanda paused, observing Jessica's reaction. An uncomfortable feeling rose within Jessica, though she couldn't quite explain why. Was it because Amanda had met Eric before she had? Or maybe because both of them might be attracted to him? She remained silent, trying not to show her doubts. Did he make an impression on you, she asked, trying to mask the anxiety in her voice. Amanda hesitated for a moment. She wasn't one to get easily swept up by emotions. But Eric was indeed an intriguing conversationalist. Did that mean something more? She wasn't sure. But something inside hinted that this man, who had so unexpectedly appeared in their lives, might turn everything upside down. Maybe, Amanda said with a faint smile. But I'm sure nothing will come of it between us. Jessica wasn't so sure. She felt that Eric stirred something new, something powerful inside her that could grow into more. And it seemed Amanda wasn't entirely indifferent to him either. They sat in silence, sipping their coffee, both thinking about the same man. Something invisible had started to shift in their friendship, and Eric's presence had now become the inevitable backdrop to their thoughts and conversations. Neither of them yet realized that this man would not only test their feelings but also challenge the strength of their lifelong bond. The next week brought new complications into Jessica and Amanda's lives. They both found themselves thinking more and more about Eric. What had started as light infatuation had grown into something deeper, though neither of them was willing to discuss it openly. It was as if they feared that acknowledging their feelings would disrupt everything. Saturday evening arrived, and they decided to spend it at the gallery where Jessica was hosting a new event. The elegant outfits, the clinking of champagne glasses, and the hum of conversations. Everything was as usual. Amanda, calm and professional as ever, couldn't help but think about Eric. Her thoughts often returned to their conversation at the legal event. There was something mysterious about him, something she hadn't quite figured out. Jessica was in the center of the action, greeting guests and talking about the artwork. But her heart skipped a beat when Eric arrived. He stood among the crowd, calm and attractive, his eyes following her every movement. She felt a wave of warmth rise within her. They exchanged glances, and that was enough to make her day feel special. But as the exhibition wound down and most of the guests left, Amanda stayed behind to help Jessica clean up. Eric also stayed, a bit unexpectedly, but his presence didn't feel awkward. Not until something happened that no one anticipated. I'd like to show you both something important, Eric said suddenly once they were alone in the room. Amanda and Jessica exchanged puzzled glances but agreed. Eric reached into his pocket and pulled out an envelope. Without saying another word, he handed it to Amanda. Slowly she opened it, and her expression turned to one of surprise. She pulled out a photograph. It was an old photo of Eric standing next to a woman. At first glance a regular picture. But the more Amanda looked at it, the more unease spread through her. She recognized the woman. It was her mother, but much younger. What is this? Amanda asked, her voice filled with concern. Eric hesitated. He looked into her eyes, waiting for the right moment to reveal the truth. This photo was taken about thirty years ago, he finally said. And it's not a coincidence. I didn't want to bring this up too soon, but... Amanda, I'm your brother. A heavy silence fell over the room. Amanda stood frozen, unable to process what she had just heard. Her mind was racing with questions. A brother? How was this possible? She had never heard anything about having a brother. Jessica, standing beside her, couldn't believe her ears. Her best friend, someone she had always been so close to, was now faced with a completely different reality. At the same time, Jessica felt an overwhelming sense of relief. If Eric was Amanda's brother, that meant they couldn't be romantically involved. And that thought brought a strange mix of comfort and guilt. 
Amanda stepped back, trying to gather her thoughts. She looked at Eric again, now with an entirely new curiosity. How is this possible? Why didn't you say something sooner? I only recently found out, Eric explained. I was adopted by another family after I was born, but I recently discovered documents that reveal the truth. I was adopted when I was just a few months old. Your mother, she's my biological mother. I've spent a long time trying to figure out how to tell you. Amanda stood in stunned silence, her mind racing. She tried to make sense of it all, searching for some kind of logic in the chaos. Her life had now changed forever. Why did you come into our lives? Were you looking for me all along? No, Eric said slowly. I didn't know you were here. It was a coincidence. We met at the legal event, and at the time I didn't realize who you were. It wasn't until after our conversation that I started to piece it together. Jessica felt the tension growing in the room. She could see that Amanda needed time to process everything. But at the same time, she realized that their friendship was now facing a new kind of challenge. On one hand, she was relieved that there could be no romantic relationship between Eric and Amanda. On the other hand, the situation was so unexpected and complex that she didn't know how to move forward. Could their friendship survive this test? And what would happen next with Eric in their lives? A few days had passed since Amanda learned the shocking truth about Eric. She had been trying to process the news, but peace still eluded her. Her carefully planned and orderly life had suddenly been thrown into disarray. She felt a mix of emotions, shock, anger, and even joy at finding a brother she never knew she had. But at the same time, she worried about how this would affect her relationship with Jessica. Friday evening arrived, and Amanda finally decided to invite Jessica over for a talk. They had avoided each other for the past few days, and the silence was starting to weigh on both of them. Jessica arrived at Amanda's apartment with a hesitant smile, sensing that this conversation was going to be difficult. I'm glad you came, Amanda said as they sat in the kitchen with glasses of wine. We need to talk about everything. Jessica nodded silently. It was hard for her to find the right words. She wasn't sure how to feel about the revelation that Eric was Amanda's brother. It was not only surprising but also emotionally complicated for her. She had felt a strong attraction to Eric from the very beginning, but now it seemed even more awkward. There's something else I need to tell you, Amanda continued, looking straight at Jessica. I can't deny that Eric isn't just my brother to me. We went out a few times before I knew the truth. And? I started to feel more than just a liking for him. Jessica froze. Those words were a blow to her emotions. It hurt, though she had been expecting something like this. But at the same time, she felt an overwhelming wave of jealousy, knowing that she had long felt something for Eric herself. So did I, she finally said, unable to hide her emotions any longer. I've felt something for him too, ever since we first met at the gallery opening. I couldn't stop thinking about him, and I didn't know how to tell you. Silence filled the room. Amanda and Jessica sat across from each other, each wrestling with their own feelings. They had always been close friends, but now their emotions for the same man threatened to destroy everything. We can't both be with him, Amanda finally said, looking coldly at her friend. He's my brother, and that changes everything. But I also don't want to lose our friendship over this. Jessica nodded, trying to hold back tears. She had always been emotional, and now she found it hard to deal with the conflict. I don't know what to do, she confessed quietly. I don't want to lose either you or him. But this can't go on. Amanda sighed heavily. She understood that this situation was a true test of their friendship. But there was no easy way out. After a few moments of silence, she finally spoke. Maybe the best decision is to just leave things as they are. Eric is now part of my life as my brother. And I can't let our feelings ruin that. And you, you'll have to decide for yourself what to do next. Jessica stayed silent but she understood that Amanda was right. She couldn't interfere in Amanda's newfound family bond with Eric. Despite her feelings for him, she couldn't place them above their friendship. Maybe you're right, Jessica finally said, wiping away her tears. I don't want to lose you, Amanda. Maybe this is the right path. They sat in silence for a few more minutes, processing each word. Their friendship had survived many challenges, but this was the hardest. In the end, Amanda placed her hand on Jessica's, and they looked at each other. We'll get through this, 
Amanda said with confidence. We've always made it through tough times together. Jessica nodded, knowing that this was true. Their friendship was too strong to be destroyed by a man, even one like Eric. That evening, as they said goodbye, both felt that something had changed between them. They didn't know what the future would hold, but they were sure of one thing. Their friendship was more important than any romantic feelings. And Eric, though he had left a significant mark on their lives, was no longer a cause for division. Jessica and Amanda decided that despite all the emotions, they would support each other, and that was the most important thing.